about a year before I was made homeless, maybe a bit less, I intuited that I was going to experience a huge life change and I felt compelled, I didn't know why, to just sell pretty much as much as I could of my belongings and everything that I no longer wanted or loved or needed. So my friends, I think you know by now that I'm honoured to be sponsored by GQ Legal Specialists. For all your legal needs in Aotearoa, New Zealand, consider GQ. Kia ora, my dear soul food friends and family and welcome to a new episode of Redefining Wealth. So my dear one, for today and I would foresee for the next couple of episodes, I want to offer some thoughts and ideas um, for anyone who is experiencing severe financial hardship at this time. You know, this is coming from my heart because I've been there, right? Um, I want to make something clear from the get-go that um, I wasn't on the street. I was really fortunate that I had friends um, and loved ones to stay with um, throughout the whole period of time that I was homeless. But, you know, technically I, I didn't have my own place. It was one of the most stressful periods of my life. And um, yeah, and even though, you know, I'm so sensitive or psychic, whatever you want to call it, that I even knew it before it happened that something big was coming. I didn't know the details of it. And so when the actual moment came, when I realized I was going to lose my home, um, it was a horrific shock. And I, I was sort of prepared and sort of not prepared, right? Sometimes knowing things in the future and knowing things in advance makes no difference whatsoever. The first thing I had to learn real quick, and I suggest that this will be helpful for you too, my dear one, is you have to just put your pride aside, okay? And when I say that, I don't mean that you just, <laughs> you know, you stop looking after yourself or doing all the things that are, you know, really important for your self-care and for your self-respect. No, I mean that you are now in a position where you are going to need to ask for help and perhaps ask for help, you know, countless times, right? So I want you to just put that front of mind, accept it, and then we can move on, okay? Because if you don't, just this whole experience is going to be way harder and way more painful in my experience. Point number two, my dear ones, okay. I want you to exhaust all your obvious options of who to contact and who might be able to help you. So as I said a moment ago, you know, I wasn't on the streets. I might have been, I could have been, had it not been for me constantly ringing and asking, going through my phone book on my, on my phone, literally from A to Z, and asking, oh, you know, Alison, I'm making this up, right? Alison, do you have, can you, can you put me up for a week? Can I stay with That's you? That's literally what I did. And every week it would usually shift. Occasionally there were times where I had a few weeks with one friend, but I was very conscious not to exhaust the goodwill of the people who loved me. Um, and although they knew and they had big hearts and good, big compassion for me, I'm also sort of aware enough to know that, you know that saying after three days, your visitor starts to smell like fish. Have you ever heard that one? I'm probably paraphrasing it wrong, but you get my drift, right? <laughs> and I didn't want to be that, that three day old fish, right? For any of my friends. And some of them I kind of looped back and went back to stay with. So, you know, it kind of worked out. But my point to you, my dear one, is that it's really important that you don't overlook the obvious. And, the, and in stress and stuff, we don't always think clearly. So if you can, if you can, if you put that pride aside, go through your phone book, in your phone, everyone you know and love and trust. And, and I hope that you have a pool of people that you can call on. I was so blessed that I did at that time. And it meant that, you know, a really kind of shitty time in my life was far less shitty. Number three, don't overlook the charities that may be able to help you. Um, you know, where I'm from in the UK and, and also here in Aotearoa as well, because of course, colonialism, right? You know, there's there's lots of things that have crossed over. One of those charities is the Salvation Army. Um, and they basically provide clothing and sometimes food, I believe even shelter and resources and signposting to support for people who are in real hardship. I'm sure wherever you are, assuming you're watching this in a fairly developed country where you have access to um, basic services, and I hope you do, you will have an equivalent of the Salvation Army, right? Um, and you might think like, oh my God, that I would never have thought in my whole life I would ever contact a charity like that for help for me, you know? Um, 
I don't know. I, I, I'm sure I had that feeling. I remember there was, um, it was actually religious charity. Uh, it had a religious vibe to it, right? And I remember contacting them and I don't know who suggested it. It might have been what we call the Citizens Advice Bureau. It's another very UK and Aotearoa kind of New Zealand thing that you may not have where you live. But again, that's like a, a space to go and uh, get just basic information about, especially if you're new to an area and stuff and loads of other things. But they, they were probably the ones that, that pointed me in the direction of this um, kind of religious organization slash charity. And I swear to goodness, they were so helpful. They basically helped me at that time to kind of organize my debt. Um, I think they, they maybe even wrote to some of my um, creditors on my behalf. So they got off my back, you know, ringing you all the time when you know very well, you, your, your mail isn't even going to an address that you live in anymore, potentially. Uh, I mean, I'm aware that, you know, for you, it might not be that you're kind of losing your home. It might be that you've lost your job. And so, you you know, you, you maybe can hold on to your home for a while. And I really hope that you can, my dear one. I don't know your exact circumstance, but just, just reflecting on my own experience at that time, honestly, they were a lifesaver. So real easy, just go onto Google and check out, you know, the services and the charities that are in your area. And again, put that pride aside, give them a ring and see what support is available to you. You might be really surprised and it could just even help slash some of your debt or just take some of the stress off your shoulders. Very similar and connected to point number three, my dear ones, is point number four, which is about debt relief, okay? If you've had a massive change in terms of your income, so for example, you've lost your job or you're losing your home, or you know, you know that's on the horizon. I mean, if you've got the advantage of time, you can actually do some of this stuff in advance, which will be incredibly um, helpful to you when you get to that stage of the inevitable dread of you know giving the car the keys back. I'm very aware though that the the stress can be immense, so you might feel like you just can't get your ish together enough to kind of um, plan and use the time that you have. You can only do the best you can if you can. And again, this is where those charities can come in because some of them may be able to, I mean, I know this is such an unusual year and I think a lot of charities are not operating at full steam, of course, and not operating in the way that they might usually, they don't have the staff. But nonetheless, you've got to ask, you owe it to yourself to ask and find out what help is available. And it may be that, you know, if you speak to your bank, if you speak to your credit card companies and you explain the situation, again, you might be surprised. Um, it, it can be easy to think that these institutions like banks and credit card companies are just, you know, faceless Evil. corporations or whatever. Like that is are human beings. And quite often, although it might seem daunting to have to pick up the phone and explain your situation for the umpteenth time, take a deep breath, glass of water or a cup of tea and just make those calls, okay? It might even help you to write out what you need to say and the really important points before you go ahead and pick up the, the phone. Um, that may be useful to you, but you know, you've got to ask, okay? I know that for me, that was a huge stress. And so finding that there were ways that I could reduce my repayments, for example, or uh, I don't think I got anything written off. I mean, that was the dream, I think. I thought, oh, maybe now I literally, you know, don't even have anywhere to live. Maybe they'll write off. I don't think I got anything written off, but I did get um, kind of um, much more consideration in terms of what I could afford to pay at that time. Final point, my dear ones, point number five, please don't lose your sense of self and who you are and how precious you are, even though you're facing something that not everyone will in life and it's, it, nobody would wish this on anyone, right? I don't know your story and you know, I, I shared what I feel comfortable to share about mine so we can never judge one another. The point is, if you find yourself in this situation, um, the world is very quick. Your relatives, your friends even, might be very quick to judge you. And what I am imploring is that you do not judge yourself, okay? And that you hold on to the things that you love about yourself as much as you can. For example, in that time in my life, it was actually the moment that I got to perform on stage at the Royal Opera House in London. So some of you guys who are old timers around here will have already seen my vlogs. It was a series all about how I became a ballet dancer. I don't think I wove that into the story, um, but the truth is, I was actually homeless in that time. It's kind of crazy, but you know what was really beautiful? 
is that through grace, through, through some unknown uh, blessing from above, even in this moment of crisis, I was so loved and looked after. It was at that time that I had a friend who was actually going through a divorce. And so she was no longer living in her family home. Her kids were there in, the, in her family home. Um, she was actually quite well off, actually, this person. But we found ourselves in a weirdly similar situation where she didn't want to go home and I didn't have a home to go to. And so we found ourselves living together. Um, I was the, definitely the guest here though, guys. And you know, it was such a beautiful home. And so it was Christmas time and here was me performing. My dream was coming true, you know, in the most bizarre way, getting to perform on the Royal Opera House London stage as a ballet dancer, you know, the same space, breathing the same air as the Royal Ballet uh, Company dancers, right? And it, so it's kind of surreal and, and this is life. This is how life is. You get the pathos, what do they call it? The, the sorrow and the joy and the humor and the, the bizarre, right? All in one sometimes. What it meant is that although I was homeless that year, I found myself living in, you know, a multi-million pound house, pounds, not dollars. <laughs> And um, with someone who I loved and still love, even though we're not in contact anymore, I actually had a Christmas tree, which is one of those traditions in our Fano, in my family, that's really important to me. So it just felt so much like the universe was saying, you know what, love, this is a shit time, this is horrible, but I've still got you. You've still got the things that you absolutely love. And actually I was living in luxury, at least for a brief time. And it really was, such a moment of uh, consolation. To me, the way I took that event and the weirdness of it all was a reminder that I am loved. Even if you have no one around you right now who is who feels loving, I'm sending you love. A stranger, potentially, if you're not a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe. If this, this content is speaking to you, then please subscribe because there's more to come. And please share it as well with anyone that you know who's going through a hard time if you feel it would lift their spirits. Thank you so much for watching, my dear friends. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Kia ora.